Well, we want to bring in some expert analysis now on how AI is impacting the hiring process. Jiat Min, head data scientist for Ideal, is joining us from Toronto. Ideal is an AI software for recruiters. And Steve Parker, director of global technology for Allegis Global Solutions, is joining us from North Carolina. Welcome to our broadcast, both of you. Thank Happy you. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Susan. Tell us about what is the intersection of AI and recruiting, and how is it changing human resources? Well, I think I think the intersection of AI and recruiting really comes in a couple of different forms. Um, when you look at the full talent acquisition lifecycle, you're talking about the front end of the process is really uh, candidate engagement and also finding resources and finding talent. Um, on the back end of the process where uh, GIA sits and with, with utilizing IDEAL, you see where it begins to screen candidates as well on that process. But also um, AI is beginning to come in and tie uh, disparate data systems together so you can analyze all that data and stack rate candidates based on their skill set. So I think there's a, there's a lot of opportunity uh, that's happening now and there's a, definitely an intersection of AI across the talent acquisition stack. Gia, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. So, you know, AI in general is being used to streamline and, and automate sort of these tedious, time-consuming and repetitive tasks, you know, such as sourcing and screening resumes. Um, and uh, these are tasks that, um, you know, human recruiters uh, do not enjoy doing in the first place. So um, they're actually welcoming the chance of being able to automate these to uh, technology. Can you give us, Gia, a better example of or some specifics about the software programs? Yeah, uh, so specifically AI for screening resumes, which is what IDEAL does, is that we can uh, look at the resumes of existing employees. Um, the AI can learn what the skill set, um, the knowledge, the qualifications are, uh, are in these top performing employees or in the, be the best employees, and then use that knowledge and apply it to incoming candidates and applicants. And then, you know, sort of grade and, and rank and shortlist those uh, candidates for you. So, you know, if a, a role gets a thousand resumes or applications, you know, the AI can then instantly, you know, show you the top 10 or 20 percent, um, rather than, you know, having a human try to manually read those resumes uh, on their own. All righty. Well, Steve, here's where the gray area sort of sets in for some critics. For instance, the Harvard Business Review, which says that 72% of the resumes are weeded out before a human e even sees them uh, and that they, they can be biased. Right. And I think, I think within the process here, you have to think about some of the reports that show bias are really looking at pulling data from across vast amounts of data from across the Internet and pulling that together and doing the analysis with machine learning. What's really happening in the case of talent acquisition is it's within a specific domain of an organization. So what you're doing is you're taking that data from the organization um, and you can control the data inputs. So to avoid things like bias, what you don't do is you don't feed the name. You don't have to feed their gender, their ethnicity, or any of these other components into it. And that way you're fighting the bias within the resume selection and candidate selection as part of the process. So that's, that's a great way to remove it, just don't utilize those data inputs. Gia, is that true? Do you, in fact, eliminate gender, race, and age, which are all protected under employment law through your screening process? Yes, so the AI can be programmed to ignore those details because we know those details are leading to bias and they are hurting at diversity and causing discrimination at the screening phase. So we know that the AI, we can program them to ignore these types of information that is leading to bias. You know, um, but what I'd like to point out here is that AI is not um, an independent um, technology on its own right now. It's always going to have to be monitored and, audit and audited by human experts that are making sure that there isn't a bias. And if there, it does happen to be a bias, that it's being corrected. Um, when you're in the recruiting field, we're actually constrained by both legal requirements and compliance issues that we can't let our, our AI reflect reality. If there is a bias, we do need to overcome it and we do need to eliminate uh, from, our, from our outcomes. Steve, in our previous report, our reporter Guy Henderson talked about, um, I believe it was a crowdfunding company and a cultural fit. So let's say on the screening process, it asked me what my extracurricular activities are. What if my activities don't fit in with the crowdfunding employee's culture? Well, I think that's where uh, the monitoring that you just spoke about of the algorithms makes the most sense. Um, the machine learning pieces that they're dealing with, they're really supervised, unsupervised, and reinforced learning. And those are controlled mechanisms within the talent acquisition stack. 
And so that's where the human element always comes in. It's not AI or, or general AI going out making decisions on its own. It's really being monitored by humans. And if that algorithm seems to not match or not produce the right output, that can be tweaked by the humans internally. And it has to be monitored by a human element on the other end. So, Gian, do you, uh, in addition to using the software, are there humans that look over these resumes as well, or are there different software programs? So, the way Ideals uh, works is that we do the initial screening, so we can narrow down, like I said, you know, thousands of resumes to the top 10 percent. And at that point, uh, humans can go. We recommend uh, who you should humans should then interview and, and the resumes they should look at. Um, but you know, AI is not a is not a black and white. Uh, it, it's it's not a black and white um, uh, or yes or no uh, technology. Humans can always go in, read those resumes themselves, make sure that they agree with you know AI the AI's decision making, make sure that our screening is accurate. So there's always human uh, human oversight and human intervention that happens. But uh, you know, our argument, of course, is that technology can do as good as a job as a human recruiter to narrow it down. Um, and instead of spending you know, hundreds of hours reading resumes, let a technology read those resumes for you. And then you can concentrate on interviewing and creating relationships with those candidates. So Steve, what is the financial impact of using AI? I can only imagine it's huge, as she just pointed out, like the hours and hours of going over all these resumes it would take. Yeah, I think what you're seeing, like PwC and some of the research we've done, says about $15 trillion in savings or economic impact. $6.6 .6 trillion of that is really focused around just the automation and the process time savings. Um, if you think about companies that are getting started, uh, CB Insights is showing it's around 200 companies have been created in the last two years. And very recently, June of last year, received $1.5 billion in funding. So there's definitely economic impacts here, cost savings, time saving, and efficiency that is being experienced. Alrighty, and, and quickly, Gia, could you just tell us if any improvements need to be made and what areas we just have like, less than a minute? Uh, in terms of improvements in AI? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you know, we are in the early adoption stage of AI, and, you know, I'd like to point out, like, some of the smartest people in the world are working on AI. They're very well aware of the problems with bias that could occur. Um, you know, the biggest tech companies in the world are um, staking their futures on AI. This includes Facebook and Google and Microsoft. So, you know, we're all very incentivized to make sure we get this technology right and that we are creating models that are unbiased and accurate. So, because those are the models that are going to win the market. So, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but it's an exciting time, and I, I have, we're in the early adoption phase, so sort of the future is, is wide ahead of us. Well, gee, I'm in with Ideal and Steve Parker with Allegis. We certainly thank you for your time on this very important topic. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. My pleasure.